Welcome to Brandon Hall Group's Excellence at Work podcast. You will hear from industry leaders covering innovative, cutting edge business, learning, and HR topics that weave current market research and technology into each episode. Our Excellence at Work podcast is hosted by Brandon Hall Group's Chief Operating Officer and Principal HCM Analyst, Rachel Cook. Hi, and welcome to our podcast, Excellence at Work with Brandon Hall Group. I'm excited to chat today with two lovely ladies from, from Learn Upon. We have with us today, Frances Clevin, the Director of Enterprise Customer Success, and Ashley McNamara, the Senior Learning and Development Manager from Learn Upon. Hi, welcome ladies, how are you doing? Hi Rachel, nice to be here. Hi Rachel, nice. speak again. Yes, nice to have you back again. Uh, it's been a couple of months and we're kind of, kind of now towards the end of the year. So I think, um, you know, our discussion today, we're talking about the extended enterprise and bringing training to multiple audiences and how um, some of the best practices that you've developed um, for your internal and your external. And before we kind of dive into our discussion, I do want to just share a brief um, background um, to our audience um, about both of you and your organization. Uh, Francis manages LearnUpon's customer success team. With over 15 years of experience in technology and education, she has worked with some of the world's biggest organizations, helping them to develop and implement comprehensive training strategies. Ashley McNamara is a Senior Learning and Development Manager at LearnUpon. She has designed and led the implementation of innovative learning solutions for hundreds of learners through her experience and uh, in fast growth technology companies. Um, Ashlyn is passionate about creating learner-centered programs that help drive company objectives. And uh, so, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we're gonna be talking about kind of how do, you, how do you support your internal organization effectively, as well as your extended enterprise. And we're seeing with, when, um, from our studies um, that we've done on the extended enterprise, about more than 70% of, 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 of um, companies are supporting or have, have an extended enterprise that they need to either develop, train, partner with, engage with. So it's really important. And, um, and just a little bit about Learn Upon, it's an, they have an LMS that makes learning simple. So it impacts, the impact can be big um, by champion learner-centric experiences and results focused on support that they make easy for global businesses to centralize and build learning strategies that drive real business results. Uh, they've also won five Brighton Hall Group Excellence Awards in 2022, so congratulations there. And, uh, and our discussion today is also a, a uh, continuum continued discussion that we had collaborated with them on a recent webinar uh, focused on this topic, the extended enterprise. So let's begin, Francis. Can you share a little bit about what you see as the state of the extended enterprise learning and you know, how, how should we think about it? How can we um, kind of you know, comprehend what, what is the extended enterprise? Yep. So just for context, I'll sort of talk about this from two vantage points. So one, as someone who is responsible for training our customers and our, our customer training program. So um, sort of what we're, what we're doing there and seeing there from a training perspective, but also we do work with so many customers in this space. Um, and so you'll hear plenty of examples from those customers who, who won those excellence awards because uh, we're so proud of them and the work that they're doing. And honestly, they're leading us in terms of how we train our customers. But I training customers, um, it's, it's funny, I think of it almost as the equivalent to new student orientation at universities. So, I don't know, 30 years ago, new student orientation didn't really exist in sort of the, the full-fledged program that it is now, where it's, you know, a week-long program, sometimes a semester-long program of, like, we really need to make sure that our students have the right introduction to this and that they have the right support um, and training to be successful, you know, over the next two years, over the next four years. And it, it, I think there's equivalent with external training of we're no longer at a place where we're asking the question, 
do we need to train our customers or our partners or our members? We know that we do and we've accepted that. Um, and that's great. And I think it comes from some really amazing work that people have done to show the value in this space. Um, but I almost see now we're at a little bit of not a stagnant point, but we're at a place where it's now a tick box of what what is how do we we do we have a, a plan to train our customers? Um, is that virtual? Is that in person? And then it's almost tick because now it's a requirement. It's not a nice to have. It's not an experiment anymore. We just have it. And so I see that, and Rachel, as you said, 70% of businesses are, are saying we, we train our customers, but now we're at a place of, okay, so we train our customers, so what? What results are we delivering? Um, what are to, what results are we delivering to our business? Are we reducing costs? Are we driving revenue? Are we driving our brand and our reach? And the people who are the most innovative in this that I think are the most exciting of their training programs are doing that. They're not just a tick box exercise of how we trained our customers. They're very much of, we has the training of our customers resulted in an impact to our business. Um, and so that's, I, I think that's really exciting. And then also just a, a worry of mine, just in terms of the space, I think we had when COVID happened and we had people thinking about different ways to train people out of necessity and, you know, what's the most effective way to reach people and to connect with them. Um, and I do see now a trend back to, let's just go back to in-person because in-person was easy and we know how to do it. And we have some belief that it's somehow better or higher value. And I'm a little bit disappointed that we haven't continued the conversation around all the different ways of training people and that really finding the most effective ways to do it. But it also makes me think, you know, we just don't measure the efficacy of our programs very well. And, and Ashlyn, I know you also have some perspective based on your experience, you know, as you are working internally with your teams. Yeah, I think it's actually really interesting what you said there, Francis, in terms of people are sometimes doing customer training for the tick box exercise. And now we need to move into a more impact driven mindset, which really mirrors probably a lot of what's happening on the employee side. We know that we need to make employee training really effective. It should link to our objectives. I would say employee training is probably a bit more advanced. Francis, you can uh, tell me if I'm wrong on that point in terms of linking to impact and using an LMS and, and using all the kind of right features for it. And now with customer training, there's probably an education process that some of our customers are going through in terms of the real value that they can have by having online training available and all the different opportunities that it opens up for them. And, and, and oh, I was just gonna say around the tick box thing, I think that that's on the learner side of things too. Employees engage with it in, I completed my training, customers, I completed my training and just a lot of work to the, do there of expanding that idea about impact and results, whether you're delivering the training or you're consuming the training, there should be results on that. And that's where I think it's a much smaller percentage of people really focused on that. And that, you know, that segues well into kind of understanding or being able to articulate the benefits and, um, and you know, to ensure that you're, that you're connecting with your audience and that there's, um, there's an emotional connection that they want to partake in this and not just for the sake of doing so, as you mentioned, kind of that check the box, but really because it's going to help them, um, you know, it'll help them with challenges they may have with the products. It'll help them sell the products better or understand the products or be able to use the products better, optimize. So there's so many, you know, there's so many different ways that we can better communicate the, you know, why they should obviously also the, the type of, of program that it is and the experience is also important. So from your, your, um, experience, you know, how do you, uh, you know, can you talk about how you, um, articulate those benefits and, you know, kind of also overcome any challenges? Yeah, it's, it's difficult. I think even on the customer side, we work with customers and we work with customers in a really high touch way. So we spend a lot of face to face time with our customers. Um, but we also do ask that they complete 
on-demand training on our product. And the reason for that isn't to spend less time with them, but the reason for that is, look, we wanna have really meaningful conversations with you. And it requires that we share a baseline level of information and understanding of the product. Um, and I do find that a bit of a challenge, but also the importance of articulating to your customers, to your partners, uh, why you're asking them to do a particular training in a particular way and what then they are going to get out of that, but also what they can do next. So if we can help train people on our product in a way that actually it's, it's so funny, I will watch training sessions that happen in person and I think this is not an effective way of learning. This is just staring at someone walk through software on a screen. There's no interactivity. There's very little conversation. And if we're being totally honest with ourselves, there's maybe 50% attention. Like we're so, all of us so distracted. And so thinking about what are ways that we can ask our learners, so our customers to say, hey, we think that if you spend 30 minutes with this interactive training session and interactive meaning online, but also you're doing things, we're asking you questions, you're assessing your knowledge, you're looking at places in the software. We think that if you can do that, then the time that we spend together can be focused on conversations about your business objectives, conversations about your strategy. That's the most high impact way that we can spend time together. Um, and so, I do, I, I do think it's a challenge. I think that people, again, this idea of like in person, everybody wants in person, but learners want in person, not because it's more effective. It's actually easier to not do anything. It's easier to sit in the back of a training session and not do anything. And if you've ever been in a training session where you've asked people to do something interactive, you've asked them to get into groups, you've asked them to do an interactive assignment, they don't enjoy it. They, you, it's actually people, because it's, it's asking a lot. And so I think just in general, we have a lot to do about educating people, our customers, our employees, about the value of the training, and then also holding ourselves accountable to, because I think in, in person you get away with this, like, hey, come in for the session and we'll give you coffee and lunch. And so if you don't get anything out of it, it's fine. You got a day away from work and you got some free lunch. We're actually, we expect that our training programs deliver a level of results for you. We expect that if you take this course, you will be able to more effectively use our platform and not be able, not need to call our support team, not need to spend hours on emails to our customer success teams. But that's the hard part we have to hold ourselves accountable to. Is this training program really delivering the results that are we promised to our learners um, and that we anticipated for our business? And how have you been able to, you know, be able to track that or be able to measure that, that your programs are delivering on the results that they say they are? Yeah, I think one of the most common is around support tickets. So if you're training your customers on your product or service, can you look at support tickets and say, do people who engage in the training program? Um, and actually a question that I'm more interested in is not, are they less likely to contact our support team? And maybe you care about that. But for us, we care about the quality of the question that comes into our support team. So does the quality of questions or the quality of interactions, does that improve if we, based on the training that we've provided? So instead of people coming into our support team asking, where do I find this button? Or how do I do this basic functionality? That their, their question may be, I'm looking to set up an integration. Can I get some advice about best practices for doing that? So one thing that we're looking that is um, you can look at volume of support tickets because there is a cost to that um, and how that relates to your training program, but also you can look at the quality of support tickets. And another thing for us that we, when we started our customer training program, we really were looking at time to value. So how long it took a customer to launch on our training program that or launch on our software, that's still really important. Um, but we've started to look at some revenue metrics around churn and expansion that can we hold our training programs accountable to say people who use our software effectively not only should stick around um, with their subscriptions, but they also should continue to grow because they should become more and more effective. So one of the things that 
we've learned from actually our most successful customers who do this is that they're looking at business results and they're tracking against business results. They're not looking at completions. The completions might be secondary. They're not looking at core surveys. That's important, but that might be secondary. They're saying our program should deliver business results and it should reduce churn. It should increase revenue. It should increase our footprint. Um, and then we look at everything else in service of that. Because if we have a course that everyone loves and says, this is amazing, five stars, and you see no change in terms of the, the business metrics, then you're on the chopping block when costs are looking to be cut um, for software or services or personnel. Um, so we feel pretty bullish on this idea that training should equal results, but business results and top level business results, like the top of your OKRs, it should be connected to that. Great points. And Ashton, do you see, do you feel, or do you see anything that differentiates how you support your internal versus um, how Francis looks at the external enterprise? I think there's a lot of similarities. I think the main difference, I suppose, with your internal training audience is you have some natural engagement. They're coming in maybe to onboarding and they're excited. I think you probably have to really make sure your learning design um, for your customers, to Francis's point, is really, really good. Um, I think one of the things I'm most interested about in terms of extended enterprise is how can myself and Francis share resources to deliver the best type of training to both employees and customers and actually also our partners. And that's something we were just speaking about today is, you know, as an internal training team, can we scale our resources in an easy way to our partnerships team who might be under-resourced to actually deliver training? And can we link that back to a business goal? And actually we were trying to start with the end in mind of why are we training our partners? And how would we know that that's actually successful? What would we see in our business results? So that's very much our mindset at Learn Upon. And we can see that across each of those three training categories, which is quite nice to, to see. And I think, you know, if you're an internal training team and you're not connected with your customer training team, this is a really good time to start having those conversations for next year. And if you think about the synergy there, it's right there. And I'll be honest, we haven't done enough work at Learn Upon to think about how we organize ourselves mm -hmm. internally. But if you think about those metrics that I talked about, revenue growth, support tickets, we have actual teams, Learn Upon employees who work on those functionalities. So our sales team and our customer success team are responsible for growing revenue. Our support team is responsible for our tickets. We're all working on the same product. So the idea that training on the product and the right information and guidance on the product that's across all of our stakeholders so if our support team is better informed about our product and new features along with our customers that actually is the thing that's going to drive reduction in support tickets or increase the quality of support tickets same with revenue obviously we need our customers to be to understand our product, to understand how to use it, to understand how to use it effectively. But we also need our sales team and our customer success team to know that as well. And so the the opportunity there is so massive. And if I look at it, I think, why have we not been more aligned in the past? Because it's the same product, it's the same content, and we're measuring towards almost the same things just from different stakeholder groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think there's something around trying to pool your best resources. And I think I think one of the reasons that companies maybe start off with a soloed approach is that one training group started off. So for us in Learn Upon, we actually started with customer training before employee training. So therefore yeah. we kind of started apart and now we're trying to come back together because we realize the synergies that we can have. And that mm -hmm. might be similar for anyone, you know, listening into this podcast is I'm actually not connected with that team or, or we're not working together. And, you know, even if you can just start having some conversations now around thought leadership, sharing learnings, I think that can be a really productive way to start to connect those teams. And there are going to be teams who just have the expertise that the other team needs. So does your internal training, are they strong in instructional design and, you know, understanding what resources are available to you or your customer training team? Do they have a really good way of tracking their metrics to business goals? Um, we just, and it's just a time thing. Again, we work in the office. We actually, and I actually are in the office fairly regularly together and we're just, 
two ships passing in the night a lot of the times and then wait, we're doing the same things for the same intended result. Well, it sounds like you have a good partnership and synergy between the two um, two groups, which is, you know, I think it's nice that you're not operating in silos because often to companies, never mind the extended enterprise, but you see, you know, how companies are so siloed across different functions. So the more that you can tap into resources and share them where it benefits the, um, the groups and the, comp the organization, the better off you are as far as efficiency, time, cost, um, you know, all of the above, basically. And yep. the one thing I host a round table with our customers and um, one, I asked them what was on their mind for 2022. So I asked them at the beginning of the year and integrations was the thing that was on their mind. And these are people who work with a variety of different audiences within their company, but there's just this massive need to integrate tech stacks. Um, and, you know, learn upon can be a piece of an ecosystem in a company, but there's so many other things, your CRM, your HRIS, your performance management, your recruiting tools, um, and all of these feed into the metrics that you're looking for. But that's such a massive challenge that organizations have of just the silo teams and then even just the resources needed or the motivation needed to really integrate those systems and that data because just... When people tell me we don't have the data, I always say you actually do. You just don't know how to access it. And I'm not, I'm, it's, it's a massive challenge. It's there, which is almost worse that it's there. And we just can't figure out how to pull it all together. It, there's a lot of data oftentimes. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Maybe, maybe too, too much, much data, data sometimes. Right. And I think that's, that's like the piece that we look for a lot in our awards program is that measurable impact. And it's not necessarily like sometimes, um, companies do a really good job in, in articulating that. However, oftentimes they may just bullet point, you know, some of the benefits or the stats that they, you know, and that's just not what we're looking for. We're really looking for that framework and how you have, um, you know, what have you, what are your goals, whether they're three goals, five goals, whatever it means, that's going to be very specific to your, your measurable impact. That's going to drive that performance, that engagement, you know, revenue, of course, um, you know, we all want that to, um, at some point kind of, you know, drive that revenue at, you know, but doing other things as far as impact or, or as far as engagement is critical to kind of, um, you know, feeding into the other aspects of organizational performance. Yeah. So, um, you mentioned about, you talked about integration and we've talked a little bit about LMS and, you know, but I, I think it was more about kind of process and, and thinking about, you know, the ecosystem or kind of thinking about the different layers of, of groups and teams. How, what is your, you know, how much um, or how should we think about technology and, and the requirements for this all to work effectively? Yeah, I think, and, you know, it's, it's rare that we will get, an internal training team and a customer training team come together, even on the, the new business side of things, but even on the customer success side of things, like we still, even when they're using the same platform, they're still very siloed. And it wasn't a joint conversation about selecting the right, the right product, or even years later about how to use it. Um, and that, that is a challenge both in terms of, I see there's usually a gap. One team uses it really, really effectively um, and one team really struggles, um, but they're not, they're not talking. Um, but that, that integration piece of it, like, I think about uh, Learn Upon integrates with Salesforce and we've now, we're now able to pull in data into Salesforce to track our customer performance. So customers who engage with our training programs, what's the relationship to re retention to health score to NPS, we can all track that in Salesforce. But now we can pull in the employee information. So we can say for a customer who's interacted with someone on our sales team or our customer success team or our support team, what's the relationship between the training that that Learn Upon employee took in Learn Upon? So we can say that someone who um, has taken our change management training is more effective at helping customers ex expand their business with Learn Upon. Um, and so that would be 
that's the dream um, and that's the goal that you can not just integrate your systems for efficiency, but integrate them for really looking at and driving your strategy. And I say it's not, it's probably the biggest challenge that I hear from customers that just looking for the resources to do that. But I think it's because they're just asking again for kind of a tick box thing. Can you integrate this? Asking their IT team, can you integrate this and this? No, we don't have the resources to do that. But instead of saying, look, we are looking to show and track revenue for our training programs, we need to integrate our Salesforce and our learning management system. Those are the things that then you are going to get a little bit more traction or to be able to make the argument or to help have someone else help you make the argument of we're losing money by not investing in this integration. Yeah. And I think from an internal perspective, it can be harder to get buy-in for integrations. It can be harder to get internal resources. If you can link it to both employee impact and customer impact, that's currently how we're setting up our strategy. And because we are an LMS company and a learning company, one of our internal strategic goals is to be, you know, our own customer zero. So we're trying to map out what's our integration strategy. Does, how could that benefit all three audiences of employee, customer and partner? so that I can make a better kind of compelling business case rather than if it was just for the employee. So I think if you were leading internal training and you're finding it hard to get resources, connecting with people doing other training within your organization can be a way to just scale it out a little bit more and maybe work smarter with, with what you have. And I would just say, because I, I have to check myself on this too, and I think it's important for others to, to just like have a moment of honesty with ourselves of, is the integration the thing that is preventing me from measuring, tracking, or delivering results from this program? If we're being perfectly honest, likely not. It is a it's a strategic tool. It's an important tool, but it, I see so many people, myself included, get stuck on. Well, we can't move forward because this it, this can't be integrated. Whether it's your learning management or your CRM or your support tool, the data exists in those places. You can do a lot with it, and so part of it is our responsibility of owning the own data that we have in our own systems and then making the business arguments for the integrations. Um, and I think that that's, um, I see so many people just, nope, can't move forward. We're just stuck because integrations can't happen. And like, no, no, you have a learning management system. All your learning data is in that system. Start there. Uh, both of you, Francis and National, shared um, some really great advice and tips and consideration around um, around the extended enterprise and what to consider for how we develop both and partner with internal um, with your internal teams to support and develop your people. Um, are there any lasting um, um, insights that you want to offer based on strategies for success? I think. And it's actually, I use the customers who won the Brandon Hall Awards as like, it's important to have inspiration here. It's important to look at someone who's doing this really, really effectively and is celebrated for it and use that as an example. So is there a model that you can look at of someone is driving their the reach of their brand um, because of their customer training program, or they're driving new business revenue through their training program, or they are increasing employee retention through their training program. And I would not discount how difficult it is to do that and how many, how much time goes into building those types of metrics. But if you can look at those examples and say, that is, that is the pinnacle, that is what best looks like, and that you can say, that's what I'm building towards. And again, back to the beginning, if you can then just challenge ourselves that the tick box is, that's boring, that's uninspiring, that's for yourselves, for your teams, for your customers. Um, so if you can just say, that's not going to be good enough, and we're going to look at what the best looks like, and we're going to try to to build there and innovate up into that, and then maybe become an innovator or someone in that space, I think it's important to recognize this is fun stuff, this is inspirational, this is transformational stuff that's really, really hard. But reminding ourselves of, of that, then we can sort of get out of maybe the day-to-day -day mundane Excel spreadsheets and integration uh, challenges. Yeah, and I think if you're leading from the internal training perspective, 
a really great first step is just connect with the other people in your company who might do training, who might have expertise. I think the internal training use case can really drive cohesion and break down the silos and can bring together those teams and just create you know, internal thought leadership that then can be shared with customers and partners. And I think there's something really powerful about that as well. Fantastic. I like how you both um, ended there. Uh, Francis saying this is really fun, um, you know, complex, but fun and hard to do. But it's really um, once you do do it and you see the results, how important it is. And Ashlyn, the way that you also mentioned that, um, you know, really kind of tapping into your your um, your your groups and kind of sharing, you know, the different ways that you do develop and the tools that you have and how you can integrate better together. That is, you know, that's going to set you up for success. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Ashlyn, for joining me today. And thank you for listening in. Uh, we hope that you find our episode um, helpful and um, insightful. Take care. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you.